Hey everybody, this is Jay. Um, I'm calling the top calling. I'm calling you. Yes, when I'm calling you, I am talking to you about voting. A little while ago, a friend of mine on Facebook said, "Surely voting for fewer taxes is a good thing. Surely voting against a bad law is a good thing." My response was, "Eh." because I'm really burned out on the whole thing. I just, it's a sick game. Bullies love the feeling of being legitimate. They want to be able to push you. They want to be able to hit you. They want to be able to dominate you. And more than anything, they want this to be a legitimate thing to do. They want to be in the right when they do this to you. Right? So the bully who grabs your arm, when we're little people in school, Bully grabs your arm and says, why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Technically, he's not hitting you. Your hand is what's hitting you. He's just forcing it. Right? That kind of legalism, that kind of technicality is something bullies thrive on. They love it. Okay? So, voting is voting a legitimization of the bully who says, pay your taxes or it's the rape room for you. I don't think it's legitimizing the government any more than driving on streets is legitimizing the Department of Transportation. It's just what's there. It's happening now. Okay? But personally I don't I don't play the game, you know, because we're captives held in the basement by crazy people who are saying you could vote for three beatings or you can vote for five beatings. How many beatings is good for you? Well, I don't think we belong in the basement. I don't think we need to be hostages to these crazy people. But right now, that's the way it is. Right now we are hostages and right now the crazy people are running things. And so you have to get along with them as, as well as you're able and get away from them as well as you're able until enough people realize that we don't belong in this basement and the doors open all that's holding us here is the f is fear okay so here in Spokane we have uh, we we have vote by mail right I made up my voting envelope and my voting ballot right because whenever I get the real thing I just throw it in the trash it's just spam to me but I wanted to talk about this because uh, who paid for the envelope and to mail it? Who paid to print the ballot and stuff it inside the envelope? Right? We did. Okay, so the so this, if this had, were a legitimate ballot and envelope, that would be stolen property. Right? But me saying, you know, three beatings or five doesn't make any beatings okay. But it does, in the mind of the, of the bullies who like to run these things, it does justify their control. They're legitimate now because we voted for them. I don't think <coughs> that's a good ex I think that's a good excuse for me not to vote. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to play into the sick game. But if you've got marijuana legalization coming up, if you've got a new school levy coming up, if you've got a new property tax coming up, I'm not going to... I'm not going to call you names for voting. I think, hey, don't hit me is an appropriate response. I think if you have a tool around to say, hey, don't, to, to shield yourself, go, don't hit me. It's legitimate to try to stave off damage however you can. Uh, my big issue is I'm just sick of the sick game. Uh, I'm sick of the, I'm sick of the bullies, you know. Offering me the choice. How many times do I get hit? My choice is I, I don't like the game and I don't want to play. Um, but uh, that doesn't mean that I'm going to call you names if you decide to vote against. I'm not going to call you names if you decide that a candidate actually means something and is going to do something positive. I don't think you're correct. But that's okay. If that's the way you want to vote that's your bag. I just, I'm, I'm tired of the bullies at the top of the stairs saying, hey, how long do you stay in the basement? Uh, I 
don't like it. Okay, um, that's it for this segment. Thank you. Hey, everybody. On the 8th of June, two people shot two police officers at a CC's Pizza. I've never heard of CC's Pizza. And then they shot a guy in Walmart while running away. Um, this is bad. This is really bad. We're about three IEDs away from martial law right now. Okay? People are scared. Okay? And the cops, they're already nuts. And now they've got reason to be nuts. Okay? We're not the Sunni insurgency, we're the loony insurgency. Okay? I've heard people on Facebook sniveling about these two shooters like they're martyrs of the new revolution. You know who wins revolutions? Fidel Castro wins revolutions. Mao Zedong wins revolutions. Vladimir Lenin wins revolutions. Robespierre wins the revolution. Okay? So when there's a violent revolution, Robespierre, first thing he's going to do, he's going to guillotine everybody who ever shot their mouth on on Facebook. You're going to see your likes go way down after that. Ugh. People want order. They want safety. They want security. Okay? So, when this gets scary, if a bomb goes off and takes out a police car in the next week or so, then they're going to grab the first a-hole on mustache steroids and make it generalissimo for life. I hear Hillary's working on her facial hair. Okay? That's what's going to happen. That's what this is going to breed. So you got Robes Pierre, or you got generally some old Francisco Franco. Take your pick. Yeah, great revolution. Beautiful. Beautiful. Great idea, guys. Yeah. Let's see how that one goes. Ophendia, Ophendia, land that I hate. Ophendia, Ophendia, you're the image of the state. Here's a question. Is Bitcoin money? Here's a better question. Do I care? If you could take a Bitcoin and trade it for a thing, it's a thing that you traded for the other thing. I know a guy who posts endless arguments, endless arguments about why Bitcoin is evil and it's not really money. Don't care. Don't care. It's a thing. It's a virtual thing. It's an imaginary thing. I play Star Trek online. I own imaginary starships. So? <laughs> Who cares? Bitcoin, it's a thing. Some people have them. Some people like to trade them. That's their business. What they call it, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if they call it spoo. Did you know that Chris Cantwell and George Guillen Coppolis are actually shills for the NWO? Don't tell anybody I told you. I've been trying to get on with them for years. But will they share any of that sweet lizard overlord money with me? No. I had to sell out to Mike Shanklin. He picked me up in the five dollar bin at Walmart. <laughs> Hey there. Um, right now I want to talk to you about the uh, the Bo Bergdahl thing. Okay, Here's the outline of it. There was a soldier named Bo Bergdahl who left his post. He was sick of the Afghanistan war and wandered away. He got captured by the Taliban. He was held as a prisoner of war, which was nice of them because we're not holding any of them as prisoners of war. But uh, the Taliban held him. And just a couple of weeks ago, oh, Barack Obama exchanged six guys, six supposed Taliban leaders, in exchange for Bo Bergdahl. Now, 
there is a kid named Omar Khadif. Omar Khadir, K-H-A-D-R. He was 15 years old when he was captured by the U.S. He was in a house that was sacked in a in a night raid, and he had a gun and shot back, and that made him a war criminal in the eyes of the United States. So he's been in Guantanamo Bay pretty much ever since. I don't know if he's still there now. Um, I think there was a plea deal and an agreement to transfer him to Canadian custody. He's a Canadian citizen, too. But uh, the Taliban didn't trade for any child soldiers or any innocent people. They traded for people who had high status in the Taliban, and that tells you all you need to know about them. But uh, there was a law in place, which President uh, Obama signed just a few weeks ago, saying that he has to notify Congress in advance of any transfer of people from Gitmo, from Guantanamo Bay. Um, so the conservatives are yelling, impeach him, impeach him. Barack Obama is not going to be impeached. I will explain why. Um, first off, he did a much worse crime that they've completely ignored. Uh, he murdered somebody. There was a kid named uh, Abdullah Rahman al Alawiki. He was 16 years old. He was a kid from Colorado. Somehow he contrived to go to Yemen to try to do a Disney-style reunion with his dad. And for his trouble, they killed his dad, who wasn't a nice guy. But they also killed him. No evidence. He was never convicted of anything. He had no due process, and they put a Hellfire missile into him. Um, so, and the GOP and the Congress sat back and did nothing. So if they go after the president for, you know, not notifying the Congress of some diplomatic f tartary. You know, complete, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, hypocritical crap. All right? But there's an, there, there could be a case there. And I'll explain why there. Um, back in the 1970s, President Nixon was called out for burglarizing somebody's office. I don't even remember who off the top of my head. But what got him was that he covered it up and denied it. There were big Senate hearings. Did you know that? The Senate could do that. They could call people and have hearings as though they were a court. Almost all of that is in the case of super bad, insane, stupid going on in the country, like the JFK assassination, or in terms of gross political malfeasance, like with Nixon. You haven't seen this done. You haven't seen this done since the late 90s. And so a lot of people, you know, young folks, have never seen the Congress exercise this power, didn't know the Congress is, didn't know the Congress could do that. Yeah, at a certain point, the Congress can say, who, oh, wait right there, stop, you, sit down at the table and explain what the F is going on, okay? They did this in the Watergate hearings. And at a certain point, somebody rolled over and narked out that President Nixon had his offices wired for sight and sound. Uh, President Nixon had a tape recording system with an old-fashioned reel-to-reel tape. They subpoenaed the tapes. The White House submitted transcripts of the tapes. They submitted the tapes again and said, no, we mean it. Don't go in contempt of Congress. And so eventually they got the tapes and found that uh, 18 minutes of these, water, of these White House tapes were missing. They had been taped over. And, uh... It, it's a good guess that these uh, 18 minutes of tape held a point where Nixon mentioned the Watergate break-in and the cover-up about it. Now, um, this was coming to a head. It was very bad, and uh, at a certain point, uh, Barry Goldwater went up to the White House and said to Nixon, you got to go. You're not going to win this. There's a solid case, and you're going down. Um, so Nixon resigned rather than be impeached. It was the f only time something like that has ever happened. Now, President Johnson, uh, Nick Lincoln's vice president, was also impeached, but he fought it, and he won, and stayed in office. So this was the first time an American president has ever been let, has ever been fired for acting up in office. The reaction to this, uh, people today will not get, because we're 
outrage fatigued. We are, we've seen presidents do horrible things left, right, up, down, and sideways. We've seen the Congress do, you know, they they act like an they they act like an out of control Roman circus. They're just out of their minds, and so we're used to it, and we don't think anything of it. Back in 1972 and 73, America was much more straight laced, and they do not want to hear that about their about their leaders. And so it really traumatized people. People were really hurt by it. And there were patriots who really believed in their state who felt hurt because their state had been betrayed and to their eyes injured. Um, the next president in line was a guy named Gerald Ford. An interesting case. He was the only president I know of who had never been popularly elected. He was uh, appointed by Nixon and approved by the Senate after Spiro Agnew went down to a corruption to this scandal. And then when uh, Nixon left, Gerald Ford ascended into the office of president. Ford tried to run in 76, but he was massively unsuccessful. But uh, Ford actually issued a pardon. He said, bygones, bygones, we're not pursuing this anymore. So Nixon never had to face any criminal charges. The, the issue never came up in court. Um, and most of America was deeply injured by this. They were true believers, and their and the guy they had anointed as their true leader had let them down. But there was an, a certain number of people who didn't see it that way. They saw it as a political hatchet job. They saw it as Democrats fighting to get Republicans, and they were going to get them back somehow, someday. Um, 20 years later, President Clinton. Now, President Clinton had a, uh, Bill Clinton had a bad history of sexual assault on women. Now, if you like conspiracy theories, if you like corruption and insanity in the office, look at the Clinton administration. Man, if uh, I was jamming a game of Men in Black, I could run that for years based on just the crazy stuff that the Clinton administration did. Um, the Clintons were involved in shady things, but the GOP was selective about what they picked to prosecute. Now, they were always on the lookout for something. They were always on the lookout for something to jump on and grab. At least the more angry conservatives and but not and not just anything would do um, Bill Clinton in, in uh, changed the responsibility for control of technology over three-stage missiles he took that out of the Department of Energy out of NASA out of the Pentagon where it normally laid and put it into the Department of Commerce so that his friend in the Department of Commerce could then okay a transfer of that technology to the Chinese. Now, okay, I don't think the Chinese are going to nuke anybody. It, it would be kind of destructive to their upward mobility. And they, they're pretty sure they're on the way up. Ascendancy is a world empire right now. So they don't want to rock that boat. But the fact of the matter is, this technology transfer in the 1990s allowed them to build better missiles to target us better. Not coal, Bill. Not coal. But uh, his uh, Secretary of Commerce later died in a mysterious air crash, and all the conspiracy theories went, all the conspiracy guys went, wah! And it's, I'm sure it's out there on the internet. It, this, all this stuff is just pre internet. So you may not have, may not have heard it, but um, it was hilarious stuff. Okay, so the GOP is being selective about what they pick. Clinton's doing dumb stuff all over the place. But they want to pick something that, A, they can mark as amoral, so they can paint Clinton as a bad guy, but two, doesn't involve any political maneuvering that they want to do later. Okay, The Watergate scandal shut down the idea of the president hiring guys to go kick in the doors or pick the locks and go sneak around people's offices pretty much forever. Any whiff of something Watergate-like will get a president canned again. Okay, so it shut down a it shut down into root of behavior. If they get caught, they they have to they probably have to be a little more circumspect about it and uh, have better deniability than Nixon had. But so if you're going to go after Clinton, you can't go anything, you can't go after anything a future GOP president might want to do.
Okay, so fundraising scandals are out. So corruption scandals are out. What you have to get is something that's that's creepy but independent of the political process. And Bill Clinton gave it to him. He said to a grand jury that he had not assaulted Paula Jones, and then he it was discovered that he had in fact assaulted Paula Jones, and he lied about it to a grand jury. So every, so the GOP is all you know the GOP hardliners, the the neocons, rubbed their hands together, said yeah, <laughs> and they tried to fry him over. The, uh, over a uh, perjury charge and they got their butts handed to them the American people could smell it was bullshit they didn't want to hear it and uh, and uh, it was massively unpopular and got more and more unpopular the more they dragged it out where Nixon's impeachment scandal was met with stunned silence Clinton impeachment scandal was met with massive disapproval. Nobody cared what he did. They just didn't want to see them fighting about it. They didn't want to feel bad about it. Okay? And so the more the Republicans pushed this, the worse it got for them. And uh, back in 1994, there was this populist Republican movement called the uh, Contract with America where they promised they were going to come in and cut spending and slash the budget and fix everything and yeah we see how that worked out but the uh, Clinton impeachment scandal is what really destroyed that um, in the next election in 96 um, uh, what's his name the uh, Newt Gingrich, there's a winner, there's a lovely character. He wanted to be president, and it destroyed his chances. Uh, there's a guy named Fred Thompson. You'll see him hawking reverse mortgages now, but he used to be on TV. He was actually one of the senators during the Nixon impeachment scandal, and and he had a stentorian voice and had been a prosecutor and knew the law. So and it turned out he was a pretty good guy in the, Nixon's, in the Nixon scandal. So the GOP went and pushed him to the front of the Clinton scandal. And uh, he didn't want to be there, and he knew it was he knew it was BS. He knew it was political poison, but he did it because they kind of forced him to. And um, just everybody involved in pushing this thing got egg all over their face. It blew up in their face. They didn't, and the American people didn't want to hear it. So essentially, Bill Clinton got a pass for lying to a grand jury because American people didn't want the controversy more than they didn't want him committing perjury. And so. Um, this taught the GOP and it taught the Democrats that impeachments are vastly unpopular and that if you try to impeach the president, people will hate you. Okay? Now, recently we had a government shutdown scandal where the GOP shut the government down rather than give the president what he wanted. And what they found out is people hated them for it. It was massively unpopular. So, uh, Obama for doing this exchange for guys. He's not going to be impeached. They're not going to want to open that can of worms again. They're going to sit down, be quiet, and try to uh, not poke that particular bear again. Um, uh, and it doesn't matter what Obama does. Like I say, he murdered a kid. He and he and his boys put the, put out a hit. They did a they did a drone powered flyby, and nobody said a word. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of con there's going to be a lot of controversy. They're trying to do this with uh, Benghazi, you know, and like any secret agent mission, the secretary disavowed all knowledge all all uh, knowledge of of Ambassador what's his name's actions, and he got hung out to dry. But uh, yeah, the 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 GOP they're trying to drum up a con a controversy. They're trying to draw draw up a a problem. They're trying to draw up a a scandal that will stick to Obama, but won't stick to them and won't close off any future political doors for Jeb Bush if he gets in. God help us. Um, and so that's why it always smells like BS because they shave everything so carefully so as not to cut down their future political prospects, and that's how come nobody cares. That's how come the conservatives are saying, Benghazi, 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 and now they're saying, you know, Taliban leaders, Taliban terrorists, Taliban terrorists, and it's not sticking. Because everybody can smell, it's BS. Everybody can smell that it's, uh, that it's a tailored controversy, it's a tailored scandal designed to try to stick to Obama while not 
well, not actually having a principle at the bottom of it. And that lack of a principle at the bottom of it, people can smell and they don't like. They may not be able to articulate it, but they can smell it and they don't like it. And so that's how come Obama's not going to be impeached over this bird doll thing. And uh, the noise and the uh, the noise and the uh, controversy is for nothing. Uh, next topic. Hey everybody, welcome to Rant Burgers. Thank you very much for listening. I'm not wearing any pants. I misspoke in my earlier presentations a little bit. For instance, I made it sound like it was the GOP entirely responsible for the government shutdown a while back. Um, if I mention the GOP or the Democrats by name and say something hateful, go ahead and mentally add in the other party too. Um, my mom was an FDR Democrat. She was a true believer. And uh, she taught me that the GOP is evil. The GOP has never done anything to dissuade me from this. Okay? But uh, I always nurtured some faint idea that maybe the Democrats were just kind of incompetent and foolish and misguided, but maybe well meaning. Uh, that idea was taken out and shot by a frontline presentation about the, the Clinton. Uh, campaign funding scandals. Uh, what I didn't mention in my previous uh, thing was that uh, the reason why Bill Clinton trans uh, arranged for the transfer of that missile technology to the Chinese because they paid him. Uh, they made big contributions to his campaign uh, and to the Democratic Party. Now, once the scandal broke, then the Democrats and the Clinton campaign gave all the money back and and carefully issued any uh, any more uh, connection with the Chinese uh, contributors. But they took the money to begin with, and if they hadn't been caught, they'd have kept it. Uh, Clinton basically was renting out the Lincoln bedroom for uh, campaign donations, right? So we gave him the White House in trust, supposedly. Now, you know, bear with me for the fiction of the state here. We gave him the White House in trust, and he used it as a tourist trap and then didn't share any of that money with us. That ain't fair. That ain't right. Well, the whole thing ain't fair and ain't right. But um, um, I, I hate the GOP. And the only thing I hate worse than the GOP is the Democrats. And I hate the Democrats, and the only thing I hate, hate worse than the Democrats is the GOP. Occasionally, I just burst into flames. Anarchy! Anarchy! Do look at the kitty! Anarchy! Anarchy! Do with the kitty, kitty! Anarchy! Anarchy. Don't look. Oh, it's a good little baby goat.